you know, the, the the basics are called you know research the company, know know your stuff. I I, I think mm. my 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 main piece of advice was try and make it a conversation. Um, you, you hopefully you've got an interviewer on the other side of the table who who, who knows how to get the best out of mm. candidates through a, a conversation. But sometimes they they they're not. And I I, I read a, a piece of research about six months ago, which was trying to understand why um, candidates in roles seem to be more successful than those that 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 that, that were that were not and and look there are a number of reasons but w one of them could be the, the the confidence to have a conversation when you're currently in a role whereas mm -hmm. if you're if you're searching for a role and, and need to get one sometimes you you clam up and if you have a questioner on the other side of the table who isn't a, a conversationalist as such you can easily get into question answer question answer question answer and and if you can get into a conversation um it, it's far more useful and honest uh, and enlightening for for both and and also it kind of mentioned you know sales coming across uh, earlier on a, a little little tangent would be we can learn a lot from our our marketing and sales colleagues and you know, the best sales leaders understand the customer how do they do that they ask, ask questions so if if you can somehow weave in your inquiry your curiosity into a conversation um everyone loves to speak about themselves um present company accepted of course so if you can get into a conversation with uh, an interview uh, then you know more you will elicit more out, you will learn more about them and vice versa. Um, and, and a conversation with, with, with facts and curiosity and achievement and a drive that brings brings you out, the true you out, brings them out and um, uh, you, you end up in a, in a far better place uh, following that conversation. Mm. Yeah, look, there's not, uh, I mean, there's not a lot I can add to that except uh, I was actually really terrible at, at, at interviews. <laughs> so again, and I, I you know, and, but I've, I've done so many interviews in my, my career and I, I sort of think about that and I think about, um, you know, the best ones that I've had. The best ones are exactly as you said, Merrin, which is um, um, where people have clearly taken trouble to prepare for it um, and, uh, and are going to bring something to conversation. A good interviewer should always make you want to open up, will put you at ease. Actually, I hate the whole hostile um, type of interviewing because I think, you know, people clam up. Um, but I think as an interviewee, you should also listen as well. Nerves sometimes get in the way and it's easy to talk, 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 talk. But listen and watch um, because it's a two, it is a two-way street. And, um, you know, you're trying to get to know each other. And I think that's really important if you're being interviewed, actually. Um, you know, I say that to my children. You're interviewing the company as well. Mm -hmm. You know, is this going to be right for you? It's got to work for both parties. And I think, um, you know, very often, actually, candidates don't necessarily think too much about that. The other thing is um, the pragmatism and, and saying what you be, being authentic, gosh, that's a bit of an overused word, but really try to be yourself. Again, a good interview will just see through a mile. I can't tell you the number of fake people that you meet. Usually it's the senior ones, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but, but be yourself. And uh, look, if it's not right, you get rejected, then it's just not right. And it probably wasn't going to be right. So, but uh, um, yeah, just a few things really to add to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for, for Franz of The Apprentice, uh, Claude is very entertaining as a torturer, but not a particularly good interviewer. Um, and if, you, if you're faced with one of them, then, you know, try your best. But, uh, you know, that, that's, that's frankly their, their style. It works for them, doesn't work for me. Yeah, and I think it's, it's, it's one of the things about pre preparation. I mean, I find that it's very different scales. You get some people that don't really prepare enough and they, they go in for this, you know, the conversation style, but they're not really prepared. They just think, you know, I'll go and have a chat. And then they don't never really bring out the examples that are really going to show their capability or where they potentially you know, think they might match. 
um it's obviously it's difficult to to do things in terms of like you know from a culture perspective which is going back to the earlier points yeah. you were talking about culture and checking that that would fit with you it's more difficult to you're in the interview but um and then you get others that do so much that they've almost got like a war room and they've got so much information they've really over prepared they're actually a little bit confused about what it is that their proposition is yeah to a potential interviewer and to a business. So I always advise a lot of my candidates, certainly that go through us, I spend time to do a little bit of interview coaching with them. And the three things I normally say is, you know, have examples ready to show that you're capable of doing the role. And there's a bit more context behind this and I support them with it. Um, be really clear about what it is in terms of why you're interested in the company, the role, and also what development areas you think, you know, what you might learn from going into mm. the position, because no one wants to hire anybody who can do it standing on the head or they won't be challenged and then they'll get be bored and they'll be gone mm. in six to 12 months. And I don't want that for my clients. So, and then the other side is just being self-aware. So think about the skills that you bring outside of, you know, one of my achievements is this but actually what skills do you bring as a person is that influencing is that communication is it problem solving or whatever it might be is it being analytical um and, and being really clear about what the proposition that you bring to the table once you're clear with that then obviously you you can ask those questions you know one of the questions i i really like and it's it's really f kind of fluffy in a way so like oh you know Caroline, you've been here for four or five years. What is it that keeps you? Why do you enjoy working here so much? Because you get such an insight in terms of what the mm. culture's like and whether that's going to be a place that will suit you or not. And I think that's really, really important. And there's, you know, I've, I've been criticized in the past actually by some people for looking at culture fit as one of my metrics, saying about mm, diversity. Yeah. But actually, if you go into an organization that's not going to fit you culturally, uh, you'll, you'll be there after two months, you'll be wanting to get out because this is not a place that really suits what's natural for me. So you've got to find what suits you and, and will help you thrive within your within your role and what's going to stretch you. So yeah, so I, I do quite a bit of support on that. And it's not just to support candidates, it's also for my clients. I want them to be really clear about the candidates I'm putting mm -hmm. in front of what they bring to the table and what they don't potentially bring to the table so they can make a really good informed decision as to whether, you know, which candidate would be the best person for them to to get on board really so yeah i do think interview preparation and interviews is a skill caroline you said it's not something you're strong at but you've had a very successful career i think by everybody's uh pretty much measurement i think there's a lot of people that would say it's been a huge success so yeah um so yeah um I, I, any, were there any horror stories any you said about any in the interview horror stories from either of you or generally I, I, I do recall back in my Santander days, we um, um, a guy called Andrew Fox uh, and I worked uh, interviewed somebody, and it was the oh, the warmer, you know, tell me a little about yourself question. Uh, so thirty five minutes later, <laughs> um, and um, was, was there any follow up questions, or was it no, just no, literally? Okay, <laughs> Wake, wake, wake us up wake us up um and um uh, you know we 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 saw the the chap again and, and he's he, he, surprise surprise we hired him he was great and he's now got on to uh to do great things within financial services um and and, and the content was good but you just had no no control and i i i, I let him i let him go j j just to make a point um but you know so yeah um You've got lots. You, you, we, you know, we've all got lots of stuff in our back catalogue. Um, um, just as you say, Leo, make, make sure you've got those examples ready. Um, going back to Caroline, you know, a little bit of leave them want, want, wanting more. It, you know, it's it's the, the warm up question is just to get you going and make sure that you've you've got all of your back catalogue of of stuff you've done to to weave that in. But yeah, that was a. That was a, an interesting 35 minutes, which which um, he then learned a lot from, as you can imagine. <laughs>